What's up guys, it is JD from Letter Rip Side by Side and Adventure. First off, I want to say welcome back to the channel. For anybody that's a new subscriber, welcome to the channel. For all the OGs that have been here from the beginning, appreciate each and every one of you as the channel continues to grow. We got some pretty cool things coming down the pipeline that we can't quite reveal to you guys yet, but we're super excited once we reveal what we got going on. Hopefully you guys are excited as we are as well. What is today's video about? It is nothing more than a blah, 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 of my personal opinion of the rigs we currently have in the fleet. Now you ask yourself, well, you know, you're just new to the industry. As far as the power sport side of things, it's been a huge part of me growing up. We started all the way from the mopeds, the three wheelers, into the snowmobiles, all the way into the performance quads, dirt bikes. We had a couple, we had, let's see, we had a DS650, a 400EX big bore. We had a 660 Raptor. We had a Polaris Outwall with the 525 KTM power plant. We had several utility quads from the Outlanders to the Ranchers to the Foremans. So we've had our fingers in the industry as far as the riding side of things for quite a few years. And I am simply amazed how far things have come over the years. And that's part of the reason on why we made the decisions to get into the rigs that we currently got. And before we go any further into this video, I really have to throw a plug out here. I really have to throw out the acknowledgement that it takes a lot to make a YouTube channel go around. It takes a lot of support. It takes a lot of participation, uh, specifically from you guys, subscribing, liking, comment, sharing with your friends. That is a huge help to the channel, but then not to mention the sponsors that are backing the channel or that have supported the channel from the get go. So I'll try to make this quick. Please stick it out. We do have an awesome review coming up. First off, we've got Nick Donut Langs. Uh, he has a power sport equipment store right here in Wausau, Wisconsin. He's a gentleman that not only worked with me on the pricing, but he got me into the Pro-R, he got me into the Scrambler, he got me into my 2020 XP Turbo. And if you guys really are looking for inventory or if you guys are looking for a side-by-side, -side, he has a bunch of snowmobile inventory. Uh, go see Nick down at Langs, tell him JD sent you. Next, we've got King Company. That also is based right here out of Wausau, Wisconsin. Uh, they're the ones that worked with me on the pricing, got me into my 20-foot trailer that has so far taken me all over the country. Shout out to those guys. Then we also got, don't forget these guys, we've got Tim and Ginger Murray at Murray Power Sports. That is a wrap they created for me when I got my truck. I went from the dealer to their location. They installed that wrap. We are going on two years of road miles, two years of Wausau, Wisconsin road and grime, and that thing still looks like it is absolutely brand new. So if you guys need a wrap for your side-by-side, -side, for your commercial vehicles, your personal vehicles, if you can dream it up, they can create it and they can get it on one of your rigs. Then we go to, we've got Bikeman Performance. Sean and those guys have been absolutely awesome. Shout out to you guys. They've been supporting our channel for a while now. They're the one that only is helping save you guys money, but it has got me into some of these performance mods on my side-by-side. -side. And she's a ripper, 270 horsepower of awesome. Then we go to G Life UTV. If you guys are not familiar with those guys, they are a portal or a hub for some of the largest manufacturers of some of the best performance parts in the side-by-side -side industry. Be sure to go check those guys out. All these links and stuff will be in the description. We also have Loyo Lights. They've been back in the channel for a while. Didn't know what to think of the lighting thing. I'm a fan. These things are tough. I ran them through the brush, through the trees, abused them, beat on them, and cleaned them up. They still look like they're brand new. Loyo Lights. And on top of that, each and every one of you guys, I say it, and I'll say it again. You guys are a huge supporter of the channel. Either which way, let's get back to the video. Now, a quick overview of the rigs we currently do have in the fleet. We've got the 22 Pro R Sport, and then we also have the 2022 Early Model 23 Polaris Scrambler 1000S. Now, you ask yourself, if you go back at some of the older videos, you've seen that we had three rigs in our fleet at one time. We had a 2020 XP Turbo, a 21 XP Turbo, and then we had a 22 Pro XP Sport. Now, you might ask yourself, dude, you're crazy. Why did you get rid of three rigs and come down to two rigs? And that's some of the stuff that I'm gonna talk about because I feel these are the first two rigs that I have been able to purchase, get on, and ride and not have to spend thousands of dollars to get the performance gains or the durability or the strength depending on your riding style out of these machines i haven't had to do that i've been able to get them pay for them turn the key and be able to drive them now have i modified some things on the pro r have i changed a couple things i sure have but i didn't have to spend the thousands of dollars in the suspension components and the a-arms and the radius rods and all that stuff 
I could focus more on the performance side of things. But before we get to that part, let's touch base. Let's talk about the Scrambler. Now, sitting at a thousand miles, I have taken this thing all over the country. I've taken it to Moab, Utah. I have taken it all over the state of Wisconsin. I've taken it to Oklahoma Crossbar Ranch. It's been to Windrock. It has been to the dunes. So I have pretty much done every type of riding style I could think of with this Polaris Scrambler. And here's what I have to say about that. Awesome. It is a very, very well-rounded machine and it doesn't matter what type of terrain you take this rig on. I don't know if it's a combination. Well, I do know it's a combination of the the, it's a side-by-side -side packed and a four-wheeler, it's durability, it's ground clearance, and now I parked this next to a four-seat Can-Am, and it has the almost identical ground clearance as a side-by-side -side does. So navigating, getting around obstacles, with it being so sure-footed, and the ground clearance, I've had no problem rock crawling with it. It has plenty of power to pull itself through the sand, and I have no serious complaints about this rig. Now there is a couple things that I wish I could change, but I don't know if I'm going to address any of those issues just because of the overall, you know, capable, how capable this rig really is. So if it ain't broke, if it doesn't need to be changed, why change it? So what have I done to this rig? Absolutely nothing. I have not changed the suspension. I have not changed the tires. I have not changed ride height. I have not done anything to this rig. Now the rig came with the light bar, came with the hand guards, front bumper, and as an incentive to buy the quad, you had the ability, you got yourself into a winch. Now if you go back, I actually, I'll put the link up right here. I installed that winch myself. It literally was a total of eight bolts and took me 30 minutes to install it. Extremely easy, simple. Everything is already pre-jilled and located. All your connectors as far as your wire harness and stuff, just capped off, plug and play, eight bolts, done data type deal now i didn't know what to anticipate as far as these dur grip tires are concerned but i am extremely impressed on how well they do they seem to be holding up pretty well not even through half of the life of these tires and i've got a thousand miles of pretty hard you know pretty hard riding on this thing and they seem to be holding up pretty well now that is one of the things that i may change because in crossbar ranch i actually got myself in a scenario where i couldn't air down my tires and the rocks were cold, the tires were cold, they were a little slick. I got myself up a pretty significant climb, which you'll see that here in one of the upcoming videos. Now, unfortunately, the GoPro takes away the severity of things, but it was to the point halfway up, she started to slide sideways, and I bailed. I bailed off the quad because I thought it was going over backwards. Now, with that being said, with as wide and long as this thing is, it saved my butt, it settled, hung a tire up in the air, I was able to winch myself back up out of it, and got myself out of that nasty scenario. So what I would change as far as tires are concerned, I know guys are getting away with putting 28s or 30s on these rigs. I don't think I will go up to a 30, but I could see myself getting into a 28 sitting on beadlocks. Now, the reason I say that, I ran into a gentleman, which I also talk, took this quad to Windrock. He was running a similar rig and he had exhaust and all the other crazy stuff, but he was running tires with beadlocks and I could see that being beneficial, being able to air down when you start doing rock crawling or serious stuff like that, where you can maybe keep yourself out of a, a not so enjoyable situation. So tires I may change. Am I happy with the performance of the stock tires? I sure am, but I could see that being upgraded. As far as overall seating, handle controls, any of that stuff, I do not see myself changing anything. Now that brings me to one of my dislikes, okay? I haul a lot of camera gear and stuff like that. And as you can see, the tires are way, they're way outside the fenders. You know, it's, it's to the point where I don't go around the mud if it's on a trail system, but I don't go out and look for it. But when I start hauling camera gear and I go out and ride 100 plus miles on this trail, on this rig, you are completely covered in mud. You're, it's in your face, it's in your eyes. You're completely covered, the rig is completely covered. So now there is, a company that sells aftermarket fender flares that I may be adding to this machine just to enhance the comfort for long-term trips. Which brings me to another scenario, another situation I run into. Obviously it is a sport quad, it's not made to haul stuff or whatever, but the storage on this machine is lack thereof. There is none. All you've really got here is just where you can put your toolkit in there and if you can get your toolkit, that's about it. Now, Polaris does sell a lock and load kit that actually goes on the back rack here. 
and I would like to be able to maybe bring, you know, a first aid kit, some recovery gear, maybe a little better tool kit and stuff, because I do do a lot of solo riding and having that extra storage is great. And not to mention, when you put it all in a backpack, you know, it's an extra 30 pounds on my back that you're toting around there and on a 100 plus mile day or beating it up the cliffside or up mountain sides, it does get kind of tiring and it would be nice to be able to utilize some storage on this machine. Other than that, guys, I really have no serious complaints. It doesn't leak oil. I've had no mechanical failures, whether or not that's drive shaft, ball joints, tie rods. And if you go back and actually look, I'll put that link up as well for our sand dune trip at Little Sahara in Oklahoma. I endowed this thing, and that is one of my biggest, biggest things I really enjoy about this machine. Sorry if that didn't make sense, but I really do like this. The front approach on this quad, before you're even hitting bumper or anything in between, your tires are the first thing to make contact with whatever you're trying to either jump, crawl, or in my instance, I endowed that thing. The suspension traveled so far between my leg, the tire hitting the plastic, blew the plastics apart, but its wheelbase suspension ate it all up and the machine stayed upright. It did not roll, it did not flip. So I'm a huge fan of that aspect of things as far as this rig is concerned. Now there is, I feel the possibility of a performance gain on this rig, but I don't know if I am willing to spend thousands of dollars to get it. The biggest complaint that a lot of guys that are into these scramblers have is they do not have the immediate response. They do not have the, I'm cracking on that, you know, thing. And it should, you would think, pull the wheels up or in certain circumstances, flip you right over backwards. And it does not do that. It does not have that original takeoff. Like on a, you know, 1000 Renegade or a big Outlander, you crack on one of those machines in the right scenario, it's gonna flip you over backwards. This machine does not do that. Now, I know there are certain gentlemen, there's a couple guys out there that are running these, that have had them on the dyno, that have done some of the grunt work to try to get those performance gains, and they're having to spend thousands of dollars to get that performance gain, and they're not getting a huge amount out of this rig. They've come to find out that the machine is actually rich from the factory, not lean, so they are spending the money to put an exhaust on it, to put a tune on it, to either replace the clutch or upgrade it, and they're gaining a horse and a half. You heard me, 1.5 horsepower, and they're getting some of that original throttle response, but I just don't not only want to compromise the drivability, plus I hear the big thing, you put a nasty loud exhaust on this, when you take a 100 plus mile trip, which I do on a regular with this machine, guys say it'll actually give you a headache, and I don't want that, I don't need that, so I've learned to accommodate the fact that there is that little bit of lull at the beginning but here's the difference once you're up and running and you hit that 10 mile an hour and it starts to hit the power band and where this machine performs the greatest the power is extremely linear from that 5 10 mile an hour mark all the way up to yeah 80 miles an hour i've seen it on the speedometer several times this thing chooches it moves it is a very well performing well-rounded very capable rig so to summarize the scrambler, only thing I think I may end up changing is adding some fender flares, adding a little bit of storage, and leaving this rig exactly like it is. As far as the tires are concerned, I will address those once these get wore out because I don't see myself doing any serious rock crawling or anything with it. So I'm gonna burn these up and at that point, we may address the getting into beadlocks and possibly a 28. Do I wanna go 30? No because everybody knows bigger tires comes bigger problems and I feel I'm gonna lose some of the drivability of this rig, whether or not that's jumping, the way it lands, the way it handles in corners. So overall, a thousand miles, doesn't burn oil, no mechanical failures, nothing is needed to be changed on this rig and it is a win in my books. Will I continue to you know, drive it hard, ride it hard, do what I need to to continue to push this rig, I sure will, because every time I take it out, it seems to not only raise my confidence as a rider, but it's just, I love it. It's great. That's all I got to say about that. All right, and next. All right, now next we've got the Pro R. Now, like I said in the beginning of this video, it is a 22 Pro R Sport. It is not the premium. It is not the Dynamics Edition. It is nothing like that. It has standard, straight up Walker Evans shocks. No fancy nothing. 
which we'll kind of discuss that stuff here in a little bit. Um, I'm wishing I would have saved the money, and I guess I'll say that to you guys. If you have the ability to save the money to get yourself into the Fox Dynamics or the live valve uh, with uh, the oh shit button, it is a next level suspension setup. Now, I rode with a gentleman that had, I believe it was a 19 Turbo S that had the Dynamics on there, and he showed me the difference when you start changing the settings on the shocks and it made a huge difference but this is not a garage princess i got i got a bunch of crap back in the day when i first got into the side-by-side -side game in 2020 that a lot of my rigs were considered to be garage princesses now i rock crawled them i rolled one of them over but i was very particular about keeping my rigs nice not scratching them not beating on them too bad or whatever the case is. And that has not been the case with the Pro R. If you go back, I'll actually put the link up above us here for some of our West Virginia trips. And I ran that thing through all kinds of brush, trees, banged it up some rocks. And I've come to find out that if you really wanna push these machines, unfortunately, she is gonna get some bumps and she's gonna get some bruises and some scratches. Now, however, the rig still does look pretty nice. Uh, she does have some war wounds, as you can see here. And now, it does look nice now, but when you take some of the shiny protective stuff off of the rig, she's got some scratches, she's got some bumps and bruises, for example. Uh, we ended up bending this bracket, which was able to straighten out. Got my heat gun out, had this folded in, it got it here and actually got into my door a little bit. Is that a big concern? Sure isn't, because those are some of the things we'll touch base on. I may actually change in the future. Now, what is my overall impression of this rig? First off, it's a Pro R. And two, I want to apologize for the light. I wanted to go out in the yard here, but we're getting like 35, 40 mile an hour gust here in Wisconsin right now. And if you've noticed, I'm actually wearing my sweatshirt. It is 60 plus degrees here at the end of November, which for us, that's unheard of. They actually open golf courses and stuff up around here in our area. Um, very, my grass even started to green up. But anyway, my overall impression of the Pro R, it's an awesome rig. Everybody realizes that this is a proven platform. Guys race them, um, they ride them hard. They're a very durable, very strong machine. And that is part of the reason why we got into the Pro R, which I touched base before, getting rid of three rigs to come down to two. What are you doing? Well, like I said before, this is the first machine I've been able to get in and just drive and not have to change all the suspension components and all the miscellaneous stuff that comes along with making your machine strong. Now, what have I done to this rig since I've had it? Now, remember, this is at a thousand miles. I purchased the machine just over 300 miles and I know they were pretty hard miles, but this is currently what we've got. I've got, first off, we installed rock sliders. I do do a bunch of rock crawling throughout Moab and other areas. I wanted to protect the side of the machine and not be tearing my plastics and stuff off. Um, on the exterior, we have upgraded to the 35s. Now these are 35 inch Tusk terabytes with the Tusk beadlock rims. Now everybody knows that in the side-by-side -side industry, tires are extremely expensive right now for like a set of ORB Rock Monsters or Zillas. The prices are starting to come down, but you're still anywhere from 12 to $1,600 just for the set of tires. I was able to get into the tire and the rim combo out the door for just over $1,600. Now, the reason why I went with the Tusk Terabytes, I realized they're not the heaviest, but they are a little heavy. They are a DOT rated tire. They are a hard tire. Now, if you air them down to eight, six, eight pounds, they'll rock crawl to do everything that all the other ones will but the longevity of these tires are absolutely insane. I got a buddy, Brutus, which you see on the channel all the time. He's over well over 3,000 miles on his set, and he's probably got half life left on his tires, and he'll probably get 4,000 miles on a set of tires. And he does everything that I do. He's gone all the places I have, and he does a lot of road riding. So to get 4,000 miles out of a very affordable set of tires, I don't think you can beat not only the longevity, but the price point of these tires. So moving on to the rest of the exterior of the machine. We do have the SB particle separator, which if you guys do not have a particle separator on your machine, I don't know what you're doing. Um, they are a game changer as far as keeping as much of the debris out of your air filter and out of your system as possible. Now, I am extremely meticulous on maintenance, hence the reason why I don't think I've blown a motor up or toasted a transmission or destroyed a differential on any of my quads or any of that stuff because I feel maintenance goes a long way. So. I did a, an experiment this summer. I did not check my air filter on my Pro-R 
from the day I installed a brand new air filter in this particle separator, I went the entire season riding all kinds of different terrains, not always leading, following guys that are kicking up more dust where you can't see 10 feet in front of your face. I pulled that air filter out. Now I did install a pre-filter on top of the paper filter. With the particle separator, there was very little dust in that air filter. So to go an entire season, seven, 800 miles, and not have to worry about changing or cleaning your air filter, for me, that is a well, a worthwhile investment. Now, any of the stuff that we have on the rig, I will put in the description below. And then you guys can, if you want to get yourself into some of that stuff, that stuff will be down there easy for you guys to find. So moving on to what else we got. We did go with the Loyal Lights, guys. Now, I did not know what to anticipate with the whips. I've always considered them to kind of be the tramp stamp of side-by-sides, excuse my language, but I get why guys light their rigs up between the interior and your rock lights and your whips. It really gives you the ability to change the vibe when you're tooling down the trails, depending on where you're at or what you're doing. You know, you're crabby, make it black, make it red or something, I'm just angry. You're, you're in a good mood, you're doing whatever, or even to match the color of your rig, you can change the color lighting, the settings, the brightness, and it really does change the vibe. Now, I am gonna promote some of the stuff that we do have on this rig because they are supporters of the channel. They hold, I think they see that we're really trying to be more than a YouTube channel that's just attaching a GoPro to their roll cage and there's your video. I really do take pride in, as far as the videos that we put out. Hopefully you guys are enjoying them too. But if you guys wanna get yourself say into some of these Loyo lights, they are a sponsor, they are a backer of the channel, put in the letter RIP, L-E-T-E-R-R-I-P, saves you guys 10% at checkout. Not only does that save you guys some money, but it benefits the channel. So we continue to test, run, be the test dummy for you guys to hopefully save you the headaches and the hassle of getting yourself into something that you don't enjoy. Now, I'm not gonna promote this stuff if I don't not only like it, um, I think the price point for the value of the product is well worth it. And if it's something I don't like, I'm gonna tell you and I'm not gonna try to promote it to you guys. So, Loyal Lights, Letter Rip, saves 10%. Moving on to the rest of the stuff we have on the exterior of the rig. Now, I debated on putting a header pipe on here, but I have seen the numbers when you start wrapping them behind this frame rail here that it starts to restrict the flow and for a well-rounded performance gain, the stock header has proven to be um, your best bet. Now, obviously, if you go turbo or other things, that's all going to get changed. But in a, you know, the settings and currently how I got this rig set up, I'm sticking with the stock header. Now, I did go with the Bikeman slip-on exhaust, and I did go with their fascia plate to kind of finish off the rear of the machine. Now, a lot of guys realize that you put an aftermarket exhaust on there. Now, I've had Evo exhaust. I know a bunch of people that are running the AA stuff. Um, and the reason why I decided to go with Bikeman, not only are those guys down there, talked with Sean, I feel they have good technical support. In the past with my previous rigs, I've gone with multiple different products as far as the performance and A-arms and stuff. And it, when, when it comes to dialing it in or getting your machine perfect, you don't get the technical support to pinpoint or hone in or fine tune these things. So I want to stick with one specific brand of performance parts. And I love the way this Bikeman exhaust sounds. I'll actually put this link up as well above us here where we went through the Dingus Tunnel in West Virginia. And it sounds awesome. It sounds like, truthfully, the way guys explain it, it sounds like a rally car. Now, I was concerned about is there a drone or is there a certain point where it's just ear piercing? And I do not feel that is the case. Once again, I'm not trying to push it, just trying to promote a quality product. And I think it sounds great. And here's the biggest thing that I notice. Everybody realizes that two liter packed behind the firewall there is extremely loud. It screams, it's noisy. The amount of noise that comes out of that four cylinder, you know, you feel like you should be doing 12,000 miles an hour and you look down, you're only doing 40 miles an hour. It is loud and obnoxious. And I'm not complaining because I realize it is an off-road rig. Now, when I installed the exhaust, I feel some of that engine noise is taken away. I don't know if it's you're focused on the cool noise of the exhaust or if the more flow, more go, kind of takes away the chattery noisiness of that two liter and you can focus more on the, you know, driving the rig versus, oh my God, I'm getting a headache type thing. So 
moving on to the rest of the stuff we've got we talked about the rock sliders the lights now we do also have um, the rock lights here extremely easy install once again those links and everything will be in the description and then for the bikeman side of things we also went with their spring kit and their weight setup now they've got the the normal magnet style weights but they also have a barrel setup their sniper weight setup that gives you extreme adjustability on this clutch because on the stock setup stock rims stock tires i was having issues with belt slip and pretty much it's a p90x clutch you know with they slapped on a pro r with that being said there's everybody knows there's not enough spring pressure once i addressed all those things i had no problem stepping up to the 35s and it does what it does now that brings me to the drivability did i lose any of the drivability of the rig and i feel i did not um however i will say this that is one of the downsides i do not like about the pro r now you're going to say oh well you can't have it both ways and that is indeed the case the low is so low and the high is not low enough when it comes to crawling so when you want to do some technical stuff you have no choice you put it in low or in high i've learned you just point and shoot mash on the gas and it'll kind of do its thing but when you ride with the group that has like a the pro xps or the xp turbos everybody knows their low is no low enough they can ride 30 35 push it up to 40 miles an hour in low before they have to switch too high so when you ride with a faster paced group anticipate the, anticipate the fact that you are going to be between low between high between low between high all the time and i that is that is a bummer now shock setup and stuff as far as that's concerned it does have the walker evan shocks we'll move around to the front my back is good but as you can see we got a little bit where she's starting to pigeon toe a little bit she is going to need a little bit of adjustment now i know in the 21 or the 2020s and beginning of 21 they really did have issues with spring fade on their launch editions and stuff like that and i could see myself upgrading springs but as of right now i'm not there yet they haven't faded to the point where i have any issues with rideability or comfort or anything going down the thing and everybody knows the walker evans there is only so much adjustability as far as revalving and stuff you can do on these they're a good shock but they're a simplified shock and there's not a whole lot of adjustments you can get out of these so if you've got the money my opinion after riding this thing up to the thousand mile mark if you have the ability to save yourself the money to get into the premium under the dynamics fox shocks save the cash well worth every penny so moving on to the rest of it like i said with the bikeman stuff sliders this nothing has been done on the front end and then for the incentive to buy this rig nick did get me into the faster you know fast recovery polaris winch i have no complaints in regards to that now half windshield love it and hate it there is pros and cons to both of the half windshield during the winter months and stuff it really does like foil the wind over the top of your head so you're not eating that extremely cold breeze during the winter months i don't put a cabin closure or anything on this thing so that does help now if you're out riding where there's dusty conditions and that half windshield gets covered it is extremely difficult to see anything which is one of the negatives i have to say about this not only the low being extremely low which you can't have it both ways i get it not complaining just let me know what it is but the seating position on these rigs are unbelievably it's it's not uncomfortable but you're so far down in the rig there's so much travel on the front of this rig that when you go to climb something but time the machine gets all the way through the travel of the suspension as low as the seating position is on this it is extremely difficult to see anything over the top of the hood and you end up looking outside the door which is fine or you end up doing a, a point and shoot and just bouncing your rig up there and for me i like trying to pick my lines being technical about some of the stuff i'm going up and i'm not really a point and shoot type of guy am i getting to that point unfortunately yes i am especially with some of the guys i ride with but coming back to the seat side of things they're getting wore out so when i'm riding in here these cushions do not have enough cushion left that i feel like the freaking things are punching you in the kidneys when you're bouncing down the trail so changes i could see either doing a different seat base or actually upgrading to a more comfortable seat to not only maybe just improve the comfort side of things for long-term trips or bringing the seat up a little higher to be able to see over the nose to be able to get over some of these obstacles and stuff versus having to just bang it up there because you can't see where you're going now i do have the polaris 
mirrors. Everybody gives these guys crap about their accessories. I have folded these things over backwards, I don't know how many times. They're still both intact, work perfect. And I do also have the Polaris uh, river mirror there. And then we do have the Polaris roof. And then we are running the good old Amazon light bar. Now the Amazon light bar was 40 bucks, 50 bucks, because I cannot justify spending six, seven, eight hundred dollars on a light bar that I'm potentially gonna go run through the brush, tear off the top of my machine. I can replace this 10 times over and then some before I'm at the cost of a you know, high-end expensive light bar. Now everybody each their own. This is just my personal preference. I don't care if this machine gets rolled over and I tear it off, I'll just replace it and go from there. So it's bright, it's durable. I've ran it through all kinds of obstacles and for 40, 50 bucks, I'm sold. So that kind of gives the overall what I've got into this machine. Now, as far as the bikeman side of things, yes, this is a, I'm gonna, you know, put a plug out there. They do back the channel. Sean and those guys down there are absolutely awesome. If you guys want to get yourself into some of this bikeman stuff. Um, oh, also, I forgot about the bikeman stuff. I do have the cooling pressure plate with the fins, your pressure plate for your primary. I was having issues with belt fade before I installed that. I don't know the exact temperature decrease that my machine currently sits at right now but I can, I don't get the belt fade. I don't get that stuff and I can, I can tell that my belt is running cooler. Can I give you an exact number? I cannot, but I know it works. You can tell just as far as the drivability for, you know, a lot of slow technical stuff. Um, I don't get the belt fade like I used to. And then also I have, which you can't see, let's bomb around to this side. Nope, not that one, not that one. Okay, on this rig, I also have the silicone intake tube. Now, the only downside about having a particle separator, take that into consideration, if you want to get yourself into both of their silicone intake tubes, that set does not work. I went from the throttle body to the air filter assembly, and unfortunately, that was the only one I was able to use. But I'm not willing to sacrifice the particle separator until I get to the point of putting a cam in this, because I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Bikeman stuff. These guys have got machines naturally aspirated, custom heads, cams, all that stuff. They're putting well over 300 horsepower. And for me, the next step is currently gonna be a cam. Now with the tune that's sitting in here currently, we're at 270 horsepower. It is very responsive, very snappy. I took my buddy for a ride and we went to the gas station, picked up a couple items for the wife. And I'm telling you what, 35 inch tires on a blacktop road, it has no problem snapping the tires and she'll break it loose on a blacktop. So I am extremely satisfied. Now, if you wanna get yourself some, like I said, head over to Bikeman at checkout, same code that we got for the low yo lights, put in letter rip, saves you guys 10%. So you figure if you were to get an exhaust, a clutch kit, all the stuff that comes with it, you're gonna be saving two, three, four hundred dollars depending on what you guys get. So I'm not trying to promote the product because they back the channel. I'm promoting the product obviously because they back the channel, but it is quality product. Their technical support, getting this machine dialed in was next level. So like I said, let it rip, saves you 10%, especially with Christmas coming around. Who doesn't like a cool exhaust for their Pro R? Just saying. So overall, I guess impression of the rig. It's a Pro R, proven platform, very fun to drive. Now, what would I change? We touched base on the seats. Uh, we also run into the issue of storage. I did get the Polaris storage bag right here, center console thing. Now I've had the Chemo Moto version. I would rather use the Chemo Moto version versus that Polaris accessory. The wear, the stiffness of the container, where the zippers are located, it's a waste of time. Don't waste your money. Uh, if you wanna put something in there long-term, straps or whatever, don't need to get something in and out of there, it's good. Everything that I put in there stays dry, but as far as getting phones and all that stuff out of there, um, it's a waste of time. Now on the interior, one of the other things I did, now I told you this is gonna be just a flap in my gums, but this is just my opinion, what I've done. Um, there is a normal cover that goes over the top of here, and it's actually up in a thing up there. If you pull it out where your ride command goes, this is an OtterBox rear case. You can put four screws in here, and then I just run a Galaxy tablet that pops in there, now I cannot ride or I cannot link that tablet to any other riders that have ride command, but if I'm out doing solo riding, I can still track my ride. I can get myself back to where I took off from, especially if you start getting in places like West Virginia and stuff, 
uh, it's nice having that as an option. Uh, what's nice is when you're done, you pull your OtterBox cover, put your cover for the ride command back on there, and if somebody in the future were to install a ride command, can't see the holes, it all just disappears. And I've been bouncing this thing down the trails with that setup right there. It's clean, it's sleek, it's tucked in there nice and neat, and it has never ever fallen out of here. Other accessory I have is right here. Um, I'll turn the key on here, guys. As you can see, it is a 12 volt USB port right here in one of your rocker switch things. It is a game changer, whether it goes charging phones, if you've got an accessories, a speaker, whatever the case is, uh, extremely, it's a very useful tool in there. And the only other thing, like I said, I might change on the inside or I know I'm gonna change, I wanna get storage bags. I'm constantly banging my knees up here. There is one that comes with the knee pad and then there's one that comes with the storage bag. For phones, cameras, accessories, that I think is the only thing I'm really gonna change on the inside. Now, some of the problems I've ran into. Now, I do not run the Polaris Extended Protection Plan because they realize these things get rode hard and unless it's a serious, proven mechanical failure, it's very hard to get Polaris. No offense, guys, but no, they. it's hard to get them to stand behind some of the stuff because of the abuse these machines go through and if they warrantied everything that broke, uh, they wouldn't be they they wouldn't be around no more because unfortunately things do break. Now, drivetrain wise, as far as a arms, tie rods, axles, um, drive shaft, any of that stuff, I have had no mechanical failures. Now I know there was a weak point on the shocks as far as the forks and stuff are concerned. I know in the later models some of those have been addressed. I haven't bent a radius rod. I haven't done none of that. Now I'm not like some of these riders out there. I get that but I do push my machines pretty hard and I try to challenge them. I like to go fast and I've had no mechanical failures on this. And I know, well, you're not pushing it hard enough. No, it's just my pocketbook will not allow me to push it that hard. Hopefully someday we can start getting into some more of these aftermarket parts. I'll be the test dummy to run some of this stuff. And then you guys can decide whether or not it's a good product. As of right now, I haven't had to change anything. Now, oh, hold on, oh, oh, oh. excuse me, but Failures I have had. Obviously, you know, you know you get your shock wear, so I am gonna replace those right there. They're wore out. I am getting a small amount of spring fade in the front of this rig. The back is still good, haven't had a problem. But I did snap the sway bar, and that brings me to what I was talking about about the Polaris protection plan. The after the third party protection plan or extended warranty that I have on this is phenomenal. Not only did they replace that sway bar, um, they said it was manufactured defect. You could see the casting issue, it snapped. They said, yep, not a problem. They replaced it, no cost to me, installed it back on the rig. Now you ask yourself, why didn't you just leave it off? Because with 32s, stock rims, stock tires, when I wasn't rock crawling or doing anything besides slow pace stuff, I was getting to the fact where the tire was dropping out the bottom and I was getting shock clunk and it was bottoming out. Everybody knows your shock will take that for so long. And I just did, I, I didn't like it. I didn't like when I was going fast, the body roll, because there's so much suspension travel, you remove that front sway bar. I just did not like how, I didn't have the drivability of the machine that I did with it off of there, so I put it back on. Other issue I've had, um, I do have a flashlight here. So, I'll just give me a second here, okay. I am going to point you down here. Now that's leftover residue, but as you can see, uh, let me double check. As you can see that output shaft seal, that has been a thorn in my side. Now, the reason why I say that, I brought it to their attention after I got myself into the machine. It was fine for a while, started to leak. Okay, they replaced it under warranty, no cost to me. Um, Ran it back in there, it was good for 50 miles, started to leak again. So I brought it back, I said, hey, we still got this issue. Uh, the tech's like, well, maybe we put the seal in too far. We put the third seal on there and it still leaks. So that leads us to believe that there is something, either a bearing going bad on that output shaft, and I was told that could keep up with the oil, do what you need to, and I've heard that people have ran into this in the past, and we'll address it at a later date if the transmission or a bearing decides to let go hopefully that's not the case i think it's something we are going to address during the off season here here in wisconsin uh, possibly get into that transmission and see if we can't actually figure out what's going on so keep an eye out for that so i have had a sway bar link hit a snap i have had a leaky transmission seal but other than that guys 
this rig has been bulletproof. It doesn't burn oil. I haven't had diff related issues. I still got original axles on there, running 35s, and all I really do is drive it, keep it clean, keep up with my maintenance, and for me, it's a win-win. So, to summarize all, all my flappity flapping is I am very, very happy with both of these rigs. I wish I would have gone with the Dynamics on the Pro R, and I could see having some more storage or protection from some of the elements on the Scrambler, but that is being very nitpicky. That is splitting hairs on both of these rigs because at a thousand miles, I've had nothing more than maintenance parts, nothing more than putting gas and clean fluids and stuff in it and ride the snot out of them. So I will continue to push these machines. I will try to continue to not only, you know, make my riding better or to try to improve to push myself as far as what these machines are really capable of but every time i get in either one of these rigs it seems to impress me between their drivability how hard you can push them the confidence that you gain on either one of these rigs is next level so i know this has been a long video guys we have a bunch more stuff coming coming down the pipelines behind closed doors that I can't wait to share with you guys. Remember, support our sponsors, support a small business, support us as a channel. It's free, go ahead, mash that subscribe. For the low yo lights, the Bikeman Performance stuff, use letter RIP and any one of those checkouts, use that you know, promo code or whatever you wanna call it, saves you guys 10% on either one of those products. And, um, like we always say, guys, don't forget, mash that subscribe, hit that thumbs up, hit that notification bell if you want to see content when we post, and on to the next adventure.